now quite confident now because the way I'd been playing for the, like, the latter part of the season. But uh, but I'm just hoping I can get a good run going and the rest of this tournament set him up nicely to play Alan McManus in the first round of the world. Terry, how about you? Is it an important time for you um, as well? Well, I'm glad I lost. I can go home and have a rest now at my age, you know? I mean, I'm playing John. And my two sons are older than John. I, I don't know about, what's happening. There's about 30 there. years between the two of you, isn't there? Well, is that almost 30. <laughs> it's a lot anyway, but... Uh, no, I mean, I would have preferred, obviously, to add uh, a run down here, but, um, I mean, John is a very tough game the first round, and uh, that's how the draws go. You don't get hard draws all the time. But the World Championships is, is our big event, and I will have time pre to prepare for it now, but not in match play, but... Uh, I'm used to these setbacks. I get quite a lot of them these days, you know, so you get a bit used to them. Keeps down, bouncing back. He always keeps <laughs> bouncing back. But, uh, yeah. Terry, um, the thing for you also at the moment is the top 16, mm. isn't it? Um, mm. And you're, I hate to say it, but you're teetering there. Um, mm. And there is a chance that I think if you did badly at the Worlds that you could actually go out of that top 16 for the first time since 1979. Yeah. Is, is that preying on your mind at the moment as such? No, I haven't thought about it at all. Uh, <laughs> until I, until <laughs> until I mentioned it. You brought it. it up and put me in a negative frame of mind. No, no. Uh, yes, I've, I've scraped the last in the last few years, to be honest with you. I've just got into the top 16 by winning my first or second games in Sheffield. And uh, my overall performance the last four or five years hasn't been nowhere near the standard I would like to play. Um, and also, the opposition is so tough to get people like John to play against, you know. So it's not only my own game, to be fair. It's the standard the snooker's much higher. And to stay in the top 16, to be honest, it isn't that difficult. Uh, you've only got to play reasonably well to get in there and stay along, you know, between, like, 9 and 16. Getting into the top 8 is very difficult, and top 4 is extremely difficult. And John, John, I know, is up into the top few now provisionally for next year. So um, he's done exceptional. You've got to play exceptional snooker to get in the top 4. Do you think, uh, looking at the way that John's been playing uh, this season, that uh, several people, including Willie, have said, you know, possibly a future world champion sitting here. Steve yeah. Davis, I know, said that after you beat him at Bournemouth. Do you think that he is in with a shout at the title this year? Well, I mean, Willie normally, you know, doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to snooker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, John knows he got a very tough match uh, with Alan McMahon mm. in his first round, and uh, even after that, there's players that are very good all the way through. Um, John hasn't been to Sheffield, but um, I know he's experienced all the big venues and done very well, so I don't think he got a hope, really. It, it, does that give you... <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, thanks, thanks. Are you nervous going there for the first time? Oh, I'm out of it, yeah. Like, I've, mm. I've been dreaming of it, well, dreaming of it, uh, and now everybody says walking through the curtain, now you're always dead nervous, but, but I'm just dying to get there now. I'll just, when this tournament's over, I'll just, like, focus on that, but I'm just, I can't wait to get there and play my first game. I'm really now, your, to your fellow Scott Stephen Hendry is our next matcher on the main table here. Mm. Um, Stephen's had a little bit of a slump uh, in the middle of the season, and I know he sets himself very high standards. Uh, is he the man to beat, do you think, coming up to the world? Well, obviously, now, I think he's won it the past three times. I think he is the player to beat, you know what I mean? But I think now, this year going there, I think there's a lot of players that can maybe we do a bit of damage, you know what I mean? There's people like Peter Ebden who beat him yeah. in the Irish, and there's Ronnie O'Sullivan, now there's Doherty, McManus, Davis White, there's, like, you can count about I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind being in a slump uh, like Stephen no, Ebden. Yeah, it's quite a good slump, yeah, that, I don't, I? No, I don't But in, in defence, I've got to say this to John, that, that I've been to Sheffield every year, and every year the curtains open, I've never been so terrified in my life. Every year, not the first year, and not last year, every year. Mm. So John won't be any different from everybody else. It's a very special event. And I think that everybody gets very, very nervous when they, the curtain out to go and play. But I'm sure he'll handle it, all right? Yeah. I'm sure Hopefully. he will. He's got big shoulders there. <laughs> you, you coach a lot of players nowadays. Yes. Terry, are there any tips that you've got to pass on to John? I mean, is there anything you can do to improve his play? <laughs> well, uh, technically, I wouldn't even mention things to John. <laughs> he's played so well. But, um, no, I, I think the secret of success in the professional game isn't down just the technique. It's a, it's a big part of it, but John has obviously mastered that. But the secret is to try and keep a level head and not to get uh, too nervous, to expect too much. Now he's been put in a high position. He's in the Sheffield. Uh, it's very easy to say, but you've got to try and enjoy what you've got in front. He's a very lucky boy at his age to be amongst what he is here, going to Sheffield to play. He's earning lots of money, 
I think he's got to realise there's a lot of pressures come with it, but the way to handle it is to try and enjoy as best you can. When you're winning, it's easy. When you're losing, it's not quite so simple to enjoy, but that would be the best advice I could give him, I think. Well, that's wonderful advice. Uh, John, yeah. uh, the best of luck in the next round here, Thanks and the best of luck, uh, obviously, at the Worlds. I'm sure we'll be speaking to you later in the week. And uh, Terry, uh, commiserations, Thank but uh, lovely to have you around anyway. Terry, thanks very much indeed. Right, we're just going to show you one man that uh, both those players mentioned uh, a minute ago. Stephen Hendry is our next uh, match on the main table. He's playing Michael Judge. But last week, he went down in the final of the Irish Masters to a man very much on the top of his game, Peter Ebden. Now, Peter Ebden really was a comeback king in this match. In the final of the Irish Masters against Stephen Hendry, as I say, he was 4-0 down, then five frames to one down, and then 8-6 down. But he struggled back, and we're going to join this just for a taster. It's eight frames all. This is the last frame. It's 10 points to Stephen Hendry and 38 to Peter Ebden, and it's him who's at the table. Twenty-two. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. A chance to get the red off the cushion that's just above the middle pocket there. Thirty-five. Ebden, two reds away from a famous victory. But he's left himself a tough shot. I don't think he is the angle to hold for the yellow and brown without going in and out of balk. Well, he played that with tremendous amounts of left hand side to check off the cushion there. And a big shot now. 43 points ahead. Now he just has to focus his mind on potting this red. It's the all-important one. He can't believe it. He checks the score and rechecks it and rechecks it again. 45 points ahead. Red to go 46 with just 43 on the table. Hendry would require a snooker. Nicely on the pink. 39. So the coffin is out. He has the bag of nails in his hand.
He wasn't playing the pot, just trying to put Stephen in all Peter sorts Hampton. of trouble. And Stephen concedes, and what a great victory. Peter Ebden, he trailed 4-0, but he has managed to take the final frame, a wild card entry. He wins the 1995 Benson and Hedges Irish Masters snooker, nine frames to eight. Yes, what a comeback that was. Peter Ebden, his second victory over the world number one, Stephen Hendry, this season. And Stephen Hendry is the man who we're waiting to see in action against Michael Judge any minute on the main table here at Plymouth for the 1995 British Open. But first of all, there's some football news, so it's back to the studio and Paul. Jane, we've got a big story in the first moments of this afternoon. Uh, Blackburn Rovers, hoping to go six points clear on top of the Premiership, have been trying to break a record this afternoon at Goodison Park in the game against Everton. Let's have Kevin Lawrence explain what's happened. Well, an amazing 14 seconds of play, and Chris Sutton has opened the scoring here for Blackburn. Almost immediately, obviously, from the kickoff, a long ball forward by Henning Berg. Shearer headed down for Chris Sutton. He showed great composure, chesting the ball down past Dave Watson before.